Hi, in this video, we will be looking at some gas reactions that do not take place at STP. So let's go back to this mole map, this way that we are organizing all of our information. We're going to add a couple components to it. So in the lower left hand corner, we're going to add volume of gas A. Now this volume of gas A, this is going to be measured in the units of liters. Most gas measurements are measured in liters, so the unit for this volume measurement will also be liters. So we're going to add a little liters to this box. Now you'll notice we already did volume of gas A, but that was at STP. The volume of this gas will not be at STP, so be sure to somehow denote that this is not going to take place at STP. Now if we're given a volume and we need to find the number of moles of that gas, we will rearrange the ideal gas law to figure out the number of moles. So number of moles is N, and N will equal PV over RT. So if you're given a volume, you're given a temperature, and you're given a pressure, you'll plug them all into this formula with that constant, and out pops moles. So you will get, you'll solve for moles. Now if you're doing the reverse, you're given moles and you need to find volume. Again, volume will be, for, for volume of B, volume will be measured in liters, so be sure to mark that on your chart. Volume is measured in liters, and uh, this also is not taking place at STP. So we are talking about a non-STP gas, at, not at standard temperature and pressure. So if we're given a number of moles, we're given a pressure, and we're given a temperature, we can plug all of that into the ideal gas law and we will rearrange the ideal gas law to solve for the volume of the gas. So V, if we rearrange that, equals NRT over P. So we need to be given a temperature, a pressure, and a number of moles and then we can solve for the volume of that gas that isn't at standard temperature and pressure. So let's try a practice problem. We have acetylene C2H2 and it combusts in the presence of excess oxygen. How many grams of acetylene um, need to be used to produce 40.8 liters of carbon dioxide at 50 degrees Celsius and 820 millimeters of mercury? So we're given a certain volume and we need to figure out the mass that would be needed. So we start at volume and we're going to make this way all the way over to mass. So volume is what we're given, volume of A, and we need to find the mass of substance B. So um, a chemical reaction is taking place. We have, uh, we'll need a balanced equation and we're given a volume of a gas not at STP and we need to figure out the mass of a solid involved in the reaction. So the fact that this is a combustion reaction allows us to be able to write out the equation and balance it. So I'll start with doing that. We have acetylene which is C2H2 and any combustion reaction that takes place always requires oxygen. And because we're burning a hydrocarbon, our products are going to be carbon dioxide and water. So let's balance this out. If we have one acetylene molecule, we will be creating two carbon dioxide molecules. And let's see, then we'll need That's not going to work. Okay, so let's start with two acetylene molecules. It gives us an odd number of oxygen atoms. And then we'd need four carbon dioxide molecules, and we would need two water molecules, which would give us a total of 10 oxygens on the right, so we need to put a 5 in front of the oxygen on the left. So here's our balance equation. Ooh, that was a tricky one. We have 40.8 liters that were given of carbon dioxide. So what that tells me is that carbon dioxide is our given. It's our substance A. So, um, let's see. 
let's label that substance A just to make things a little bit easier for us. And then acetylene is what I'm trying to find the grams of, so we'll label that substance B. Now the first thing I need to do, if you remember back to that um, mole map chart, is I need to solve for the number of moles. So rearranging that ideal gas law. Remember, we use the ideal gas law when we have a gas that's not at STP. We get PV over RT. All right, now our pressure is 820 millimeters of mercury. Not the easiest pressure that could have been given to us in a question because we need to convert millimeters of mercury to atmospheres. So another equation here before we even, another conversion I should say, before we even get started with this problem. So we need to convert millimeters of mercury to atmospheres. So 820 millimeters of mercury is what I'm given. Um, one atmosphere is equivalent to 760 millimeters of mercury. So in my calculator, I'm going to type out 820 divided by 760. And I get 1.078, yada, yada, lots of stuff. So I'm just going to make that, that pressure is going to be equal to 1.078. 08 atmospheres. Now my volume is the volume that I'm given, 40.8 liters. Then I put it over RT, so R is 0.0821 liter atmosphere over mole K. That's a weird unit. I don't I didn't even finish the mole part here. Um, just kind of skipping past that. Now our temperature is 50 degrees Celsius. So that's a, that's a problem for us as well. We need to convert that to Kelvins. So 273 plus 50 gives us 323. And um, I'm not even going to convert using the 273.15 because I know that 0.15 won't matter really a whole lot. Um, that Those extra two sig figs aren't going to make that much of a difference in the end anyways. So now when I perform this calculation, you'll see when I do this on the calculator here, I'm going to take 1.08 times 40.8 divided by, and then I'm going to use um, a parentheses. Make sure you use a parentheses when you divide these numbers. Parentheses, 0 0.0821 times 323. If you don't use parentheses, your answer will be incorrect. Calculators don't, don't know what to do, so you have to really be very explicit. So I get 1.66. I'm going to round this to two significant figures, um, assuming that my, no, I'm going to round, I'm just going to keep it at three significant figures because I'll round at the very end. So I get 1.66 moles of CO2 because that's the um, number of moles in that specific volume at that specific temperature and pressure. So I'm at moles. This is where I am on the mole map. I'm, I'm only here. I have lots more steps to go. Now I have to convert moles of my carbon dioxide to grams of acetylene. So I'm given 1.66 moles of carbon dioxide. That's from the previous problem that I did. And now I want to convert moles of carbon dioxide to moles of acetylene because in this chemical reaction, those are the relationships. So I want to cancel out moles of carbon dioxide, turn it into moles of acetylene. And to do this, I need to use the mole ratio. So this is where the coefficients come into play. Four moles of carbon dioxide are made whenever two moles of acetylene are reacted. So now I've converted to moles of acetylene and I need to figure out now how heavy would that be? Now, one mole of acetylene has a mass of 26 grams. So I have two carbons, 12 grams each, so that's 24, and then two hydrogens, 24, 25, 26. So that brings me up to 26 grams of C2H2 for every mole. I'm going to punch all this into a calculator. I get 1.66 times 2 times 26 Take that answer divided by 4, and I get 21.58. Of course, I need to take care of my significant digits here. I'm going to round to two significant digits. I'm going to assume that 50 is rounded. It has two significant digits in it. So I'm going to round this to 22 
And then my unit for that is grams of acetylene. So grams of C2H2. And that is my final answer for this question. Lots and lots and lots of work needs to be done to get to that final answer. This is, these are tricky problems. We had to convert our temperature. We had to convert our pressure before we could even plug them into the ideal gas law. Then we needed to use the rearrangement of the ideal gas law to figure out the number of moles in that gas and then do our normal stoichiometry routine. Lots of stuff. Let's try another one. If we have 29.4 grams of iron 2 sulfide, and we react it with hydrochloric acid to produce FeCl2 and H2S, how many liters of H2S will be produced at 25 degrees Celsius and 1.34 atmospheres? None of this is taking place at STP. What we're going to do in this situation is we're starting with the mass. So we're going to be starting with the mass of a substance and then we'll be working our way through this map and figuring out, okay, if we're given a mass, how many moles is that? How many moles of the new thing are we going to create? And then what volume will that take up? If we're creating a gas, what volume will that take up at um, a certain temperature and pressure? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write out my balance equation. So I have... Uh, FES plus HCl hydrochloric acid and that gives us FeCl2 and H2S and I'm going to balance this equation and it looks like the only thing that needs something is a 2 in front of the hydrochloric acid so there we go put a 2 in front of the hydrochloric acid and I'm just going to put ones everywhere else just to make sure that I can see those ratios really easily. Um, whenever I do stoichiometry, I like to put ones as coefficients, just as placeholder, so I can really easily see how I'm converting in those mole ratios. So A is my FES, um, what I'm given, and what I'm trying to find information about is the H2S. I'm labeling these in my chemical reaction so I know what I'm starting with and where I'm going. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with that 29.4 moles or grams of FES. The first conversion I'm going to make is I want to figure out, okay, if I have this mass of FES, how many moles is that equal to? Well, the way we do that is we divide by the molar mass of the FES. So how heavy is one mole of um, this iron 2 sulfide. Well, it turns out that one mole of iron 2 sulfide has a mass of about 87.9 grams. So now I've figured out, at this point, i figured out how many moles of iron 2 sulfide I have. The next thing I need to do is I need to figure out how many moles, using the mole ratio, of H2S will be created. So I want to cancel out moles of FES and turn it into moles of H2S. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio here. One mole of FES makes one mole of H2S. Very simple. I'm going to pull up my calculator here, and I have 29.4 divided by 87.9. And I get 0.334, a bunch of numbers. Really don't need all of them. I won't do my sig figs until the very end, so I have 0.334 moles of H2S. Now, where we're at in this chart is at moles of B, moles of substance B. I still have one more problem that I need to solve, and that is what volume would that number of moles take up at 25 degrees Celsius and 1.34 atmospheres? So I'm going to solve for volume here. The volume, using the ideal gas law, just rearranging it a bit, is NRT over P. So the number of moles, this is what I just found out. So 0.334 moles of H2S, the ideal gas constant, 0 0.0821 liters atmospheres over mole K, and my temperature. So I have 25 degrees Celsius, but we can't use Celsius as a temperature unit. We need to convert to Kelvin, so otherwise this this ideal gas constant, this 0 0.0821 stuff, does not work. So 273 plus 25 gives me 298 kelvins. So 298 kelvins. 
We're going to put this all together and put it all over P. Well, this is the worst line I've ever made. That's not a straight line. Sorry about that. Um, my pressure is 1.34 atmospheres. This question is a little bit easier because I don't have to convert my pressure unit. I'm given atmospheres already. So typing this all into a calculator, I have 0.334 times 0.0821 times 298 all over 1.34 atmospheres and I get 6.098 bunch of numbers so rounding now to two significant digits I get 6.1 now what units are those we've done so many things with units this is a volume this is going to be in liters so 6.1 liters of H2S